Hello. For a while now, I've been thinking about city silhouettes and how to make a game out of them. And I've tried a couple of things, and none of it has really been worth mentioning, but I think I've come up with a decent idea. So you have these silhouettes, and basically a big part of that is that there's no detail on them, and you can see a whole building on screen, no problem. Because of that, if we're going, I was thinking in terms of things like building cities and stuff, but we can actually think in terms of very tiny characters. Uh, there are a number of games with very tiny characters these days, and um, that's fine, and that actually works well in this situation. So if we think in terms of a very tiny character, then we can start to think in terms of a city that you can see, and a very tiny character that you're moving around it. So I was thinking, um, we'll call it a zombie survival game, an open world zombie survival game. Uh, I wouldn't want to actually use zombies, but rather than try and build any kind of um, world here, we'll just talk about zombies. So the buildings, you wouldn't be able to see any detail, but you would be able to see doors if there were doors. Um, and so uh, black doors would mean there's no one home, the lights are off, and those buildings are probably inhabited by monsters. You can go in and scour them of monsters and maybe claim some goodies that are hidden in there. Uh, and maybe once you've claimed the city, maybe once you've claimed the building as your own, you might put a person in, an ally, uh, or, or a whole bunch of allies, into one of these buildings. And in that case, the door would turn white. The lights are on. Uh, these buildings are the small, just random buildings that you'd run across in a, in a, in a city. Uh, these are not structures you'd want to permanently use as your um, best lines of defense. Um, at, over time, they become less and less defensible, and eventually you'll want to evacuate them for uh, some other place or for a landmark building. Every street, this is a street, and it goes on, you know, for a long ways. Every street has a landmark building on it, and it's an open world game, so you can switch street to street. It's not like you conquer one landmark building and then another. The landmark buildings are what you see in the background. These aren't, uh, you know, a giant skyscrapers down in downtown. Each of these buildings is on a different street, and each of them can be approached by you, uh, and infiltrated by you, and cleared out by you, although it's not easy. And once you put people in a landmark building, then you've got uh, the lights turn on, and you can see that from everywhere. So. Um, these are people who can see you and are helpful, and they'll tell you what's coming up. Uh, they'll take pot shots at enemies, maybe. Um, they'll run distractions or something like that. So every light in the background is an ally helping you. And uh, as your as your number of allies increases and as your tec technical expertise grows, you can reclaim more and more of these buildings, and you'll get more and more lights. until, you know, in the long run, you probably have tons and tons of, of lights back here, and it's a full, glowing building. Um, looks like a real city once again. Uh, and of course, you know, it's certainly possible for you to have uh, weather as well, which could be fun and quite nice. So even though uh, the, this is not most of these micro-character games, have levels that are laid out like this so that there's never very much room over your head. Um, and that's because room over your head is a giant waste in most cases. Uh, the visuals I plan on putting in are, are worth seeing, but they're certainly not cool enough to uh, merit having half of the screen wasted on them. The reason why uh, shooting upwards, or rather, sorry, the reason why having a character that, uh, that is this tiny and having this much space above their head, that, that's bad. That's because these characters have a very limited reach. Uh, if you have uh, a sword, for example, that in order to use that sword, you've got to walk across the screen and then swing the sword. And even if your character is pretty fast, that's going to take a long time because the character's speed is usually measured in character lengths per second. Um, or meters per second, or whatever you want to call it. Basically, crossing the screen is not is not as quick as it is with a character that's larger. So most of these characters use guns.
or gun-like effects, and can shoot at an enemy who at, at quite a range, and the bullets generally have travel time. Um, and of course the enemy, the, uh, the characters can usually jump quite high, but not to the top of the screen. So if you've got a jumping enemy, the character can shoot the jumping enemy. And I was thinking, that works great, uh, but if you've got a flying enemy, the reason why flying enemies are so hated in uh, most of these side-scrolling games is because you can't really just shoot the flying enemy. Um, even if you were using your mouse for targeting, which makes ground enemies hard, by the way, but even if you're using your mouse for targeting, if the bullet has a travel time, flying enemies are a real pain in the ass because they're pulling a Medusa head and you're trying to hit them and you're just missing continuously. So I was thinking that the way to do flying enemies is that you have you just have two weapons. You've got a weapon that fires straight and hits guys on the ground, or flying enemies if they come too low. And then you've got a weapon which can target anything over your head, anything in your airspace. Um, and it locks onto them when you hold down the button, and when you let go of the button, it fires a tracking beam that automatically hits them. And the more of the enemies are in the air, the longer it takes to lock onto them all. And, uh, and therefore, what happens is you've got this situation where um, you can run around and jump, and you know jump on top of the silhouettes and run around all you want and shoot the enemies with straight fire and run around and shoot more enemies with straight fire. Like a normal game. But if you want to hit the enemies in the sky, you've got to stand still and lock onto them. And doing that takes time, so you've got to make sure you're in a position where uh, the ground-based enemies won't hit you and the flying enemies won't hit you while you're busy locking on. And I think that adds in um, a kind of interesting uh, uh, element to the gameplay. Interesting enough to have the sky there. So this game doesn't have any of the complex um, uh, cave structures and pits that most of these games with microscopic characters have. Uh, instead, it's mostly flat. And that's fine. There don't need to be any kind of pits or challenges because of, of that sort, because the game has flying enemies and ground enemies, and you've got to stand still to hit the flying enemies, um, but you don't want to get hit by either their bullets or the ground enemies' bullets or the ground enemies themselves. So you've got a nice combination of, of uh, challenges to work with, especially when you start to talk about um, creatures bursting out of buildings that you haven't cleared, and what happens when you go into a building. I haven't decided that yet. But in short, I think this game sounds kind of fun. Um, you go across the city, it's an open city simulation, and you um, slowly re-inhabit re -inhabit the larger buildings in the city and fortify them. And uh, you use the smaller buildings on a more temporary basis, clear them out for resources. And you shoot straight and fast against ground-based enemies, or you can stand still and do lock-on against anyone above your head. That's the basics, and um, yeah, just kind of chattering about it.